Kristen Cole is on the line with us. Uh, Kristen is the trustee of the Alaska Fund Trust dot org. Alaska Fund Trust dot org. You can donate to that online. I believe the, it's one hundred and fifty dollars max. Kristen, welcome to the program on this beautiful day. It is a beautiful day, and it is the AlaskaFundTrust dot com. Oh, dot da, dot com. Dot yeah. com. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate that. You bet. Are you just a girl from Wasilla? You know, Shannon Moore, she's just a girl from Homer. Well, you know, I'm originally from Nebraska, but I've been here 40 years, so I guess you could say I'm just a girl from Wasilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it how people wrap themselves in the flag and, yeah. you know, and they're victims. <laughs> when oh, in, my. When, in fact, they're alligators. Uh, you know, you're a personal friend of the governor's and known the lady for a long time. Uh, how do you think this has impacted her life? I mean, up here and just over her term of governor there's there's i even had phil munger on earlier and 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 i asked him you know is there can you can you tell me another governor in the united states history that has ever been peppered with this type of ethics complaint and and the onslaught of malicious uh attacks and he couldn't come up with anybody well you know the truth is is you, you know who really gets harmed in all this don't you the people of Alaska? Absolutely. Yeah. We had a governor that accomplished, you know, people say what she accomplished in two and a half years. Really, it was two, because she got it done by August of last year. Mm-hmm. She accomplished in two years which, which, more than most governors accomplish in a couple of terms. Right. And so by these people who think that they're doing, uh, you know, her harm by all of these ethics complaints and really keeping her from, from doing what all of us elected her to do, the truth is, they're harming the state of Alaska. They're harming us as citizens. You know, you can have, Kristen, you can have people like you that are personal friends, people like me that support the governor's policies. And uh, I've been a, told her she was going to be governor. I remember one day she was walking down the sidewalk in front of the LIO like five years or so before she, six years before she ran. I called her governor. You know, she laughed. And But anyway, it, but then there's the others that are out there that are, you know, kind of out there in the middle and all. I mean, they should even be upset. Even if they're not real fond of the governor, they too should be upset by $2 million in legal fees, uh, a half a million dollars personally and growing. You know, I mean, because it, it does. It takes away from safe roads and education and, and health care and, and these types of things. That That's $2 million could have gone someplace else. That's exactly right. And that, that's, what the, that's the thing that, that Alaskans should be upset over. I mean, these aren't... Um you know, the truth is, as you know, anyone can file a complaint, They and uh, they don't have, have much accountability once they do file a complaint, and then Alaskans get stuck holding the bag. And um, I hope that they're waking up and seeing what has really happened here, and, and seeing really how selfless it was of the governor to make the decision she did last Friday for our benefit. Help people understand that, Kristen, how this was a selfless decision. Well, she honestly believes in her core of core that smaller government is better, more efficient government is better, that we really do need to continue to explore our clean energy um, and, and get energy independent or more independent from foreign oil, et cetera. That's what she ran on. That's what she believes in. And for, all of, for her to sit idly by and watch thousands of dollars, millions now, yes. and to watch her, uh, you know, the, the government and the government staff that should be working on these other projects that are important to us as Alaskans have to work on these frivolous complaints that, that, that continue to be dismissed. They have no merit whatsoever. Um, it really keeps um, her from doing what we elected her to do. It keeps us as Alaskans from being able to receive the benefit of that leadership and also the benefit of the, of, of the, of the um, ideas that she could continue to move forward. I mean, if you look at Point Thompson, you look at several things that she's accomplished aside from AGEA and aside from forward funding of education and aside from ethics reform. She has done so much and could do so much more. So what she what she she looked at all that and said, you know what? For another year and a half, this is just going to continue. There are people out there who don't care what it does to the state of Alaska, don't care what it's doing to our citizens. They're going to continue to pepper me with these frivolous ethics complaints. It's going to cost my state, my citizens, my friends, all of these dollars, and I'm not going to be able to move forward doing the things that I have been doing. The best thing for me to do is to step aside and allow Lieutenant Governor Parnell to move this state forward because that's in the best interest of Alaskans. That's what I'm talking about when I say it was a very selfless decision. Correct. 
you know, I, I try to do my best here to explain how these ethics complaints, these FOIA requests, freedom of information requests and all, how they bog down. Can, can you kind of help expand on that a little bit about how this, this administration, it just every time they turn around, they're spending all these man hours on these FOIA requests. And, and it, it has it, and then has it really just put a log, a chain and log on the governor's uh, political legs? Well, absolutely, and I think if people could see this for the political wrangling that it really is, and it's not just these people from Homer, that it's really people <laughs> who are all the way down to, uh, you know, Florida, who <sighs> happen to just say they're from, from uh, Homer, when they could really wrap their arms around how political this really is. I think people would get really angry that they're allowing people, partisan politics, people from the lower 48 who have no interest in Alaska whatsoever, to really... Um, shut us down up here and keep us from doing what's important and spending money on, on things that are important like education and roads and safety and developing our natural resources. I think people would get really upset if they totally understood it because when an ethics complaint is filed, um, you know, the, the complainer has no accountability nor any responsibility once that's done. And, and, and there's huge responsibility and accountability, you know, on the state side every time that one of those complaints come forward. And, right. um, Right. It's not like you know you uh, you know and I own our own businesses and all and we we can handle complaints the way we want to. Right. Uh, we we can talk to the customer. We can try to do this. We can try to we can go to the Better Business Bureau and do mediation. Uh, what do they call it? Mediation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we can do. There's a lot of different uh, or or we can just hang up the phone. Right. Right. Um, in government, that's not an option. No. There's a process in which and and I, I'm not trying to be redundant with all this, but I'm trying to do is to is to help people understand the magnitude that it takes. You can't just tell people to, hey, go fly a kite. You know, you're an idiot, Andre McLeod or Linda Beagle. Um, your ethics complaint is going to be unfounded. No, they have to investigate it. They have to do the FOIA request. They That's have right. to go through this process to investigate by statute. Right. Yeah. Right. And so if you think about that, um, you know, it's been quoted. I've seen several quotes, you know, six, 7,000 man hours uh, so far and, you know, a couple of million dollars, and that's just so far. And I think the frustrating thing for her was she saw this is not going to stop because these people really don't care about Alaska. If they did, if they had a true complaint, uh, so be it. But but I think all of us can get online and look at what these complaints are. You can get online, even though they're supposed to be confidential, these people filing the complaints certainly release them to the press immediately so they're out there for everyone to see right if you get online and you take a good look at them i don't think there's anybody that believes that there's two cents worth of legitimacy in any of them and hey, if that go ahead if that's true then i think most more people will be fire mad about how much money the state is having to spend because these people um have a political agenda versus an agenda that's really good for all of us here in alaska here's a sign you know you're in trouble when you wear your husband's snow machine jacket to a start of a race <laughs> and you get an ethics complaint, man, you, it's like, okay, all right. <laughs> you know the truth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's you know, how ridiculous you, it's become. Yeah, you know you're in trouble then, man. I mean, it, it, um, do, do you – well, let, let me do this. There, there's a half a million dollars right now, $600,000 that the governor – and that's part of our conversation here is AlaskaFundTrust.com – that happened in eight months, I believe, mm -hmm. that those legal fees have, have racked up. Mm -hmm. If she would have stayed another 16 months, is it, is it fair to say it would have been a million five or something? I think easily. Wow. Easily. Wow. And, and that's just on the, per, on, on the personal side. You can imagine, you know, when government's involved on the other side of it, it's, it's never as efficient or as, as, as uh, inexpensive as on the, on the personal side. So you can just magnify that figure on the state side. And the problem is, is, is it truly cripples the state. It cripples, you know, the 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 uh, good folks who are working hard out there um, to try to, um, you know, move forward with issues that are important to all of us, um, to help all of us as Alaskans. And um, that's the sad thing. That's the really sad thing. And you know what the sadder thing is, is that we have lost a great leader because these people were thinking about their own political agendas rather than what's best for us as a state. Kristen Cole, trustee of the Alaska Fund Trust. There's still uh, .com, alaskafundtrust.com. There's still time to donate. Kristen, can you hang with us? Because I wanted to kind of expand on the Alaska Fund Trust. I know we've been talking 
Can, can you stick with me still? Absolutely. Okay, great. That'd be great. We'll talk more about the AlaskaFundTrust.com. People can still go and donate there. The max is $150. Um, they did that on purpose uh, because, you know, they wanted average people to donate, and they didn't want to, you know, set the example that there's a bunch of billionaires wanting to take care of problems. And Anyway, so it's 150 bucks max, and uh, there's still time to donate. AlaskaFundTrust.com. Encourage you to go there. Give twenty five bucks. Give ten bucks. Give five bucks. Doesn't matter. Give the whole one hundred fifty. Have your wife donate one hundred fifty, and you donate one hundred fifty. Have your kids donate one hundred fifty. If you got lots of kids, have them all donate one hundred fifty each. We'll be right back with Kristen Cole, trustee, AlaskaFundTrust.com. dot 